Hi, it's Elizabeth and today I'm going to talk about menopause and alcohol and really try very hard not to sound like the fun police whilst I'm at it. Um, where to start? I'm just going to tell you my story uh, with alcohol. It's, it's not really a long one at all because I'm not really that much of a drinker. I, uh, I used to be a one can Dan, um, now I'm literally like half a can and I'll turn into the night's entertainment. It's really not good. Um, I'm not saying I don't enjoy alcohol. There are some cocktails that I really like and, you know, but even when I was at school, what would happen would be when I was 17 pretending to do, be 22 uh, on a night out um, is that, you know, the drink du jour or one of them was uh, when I was uh, just venturing into going out uh, with friends and um, Southern Comfort and Orange uh, and I'd order that, have a couple of scoops and think, eh, no, nah. end up giving it to my good friend Linda who'd end up a lot more inebriated than she was planning to be because I was ordering drinks and thinking, yeah, I'm going to join in and be sociable. It just wasn't for me. And then when I got my driving license, I just decided to become designated driver and I would always make sure my friends got home safe from a night out. And that was always my excuse. Oh no, I'm going to have a soft drink because I'm drinking. It, uh, driving rather. And it, it took the pressure off me that way. But it's just not something that I really enjoyed, to be honest with you. I think I've been drunk once or twice. The first time, bearing in mind I'm 53, this 2009, I was at the Leeds and Reading Festival and I had a pint of cider with a shot of spicy apple brandy dropped into it. It was delicious. But I walked back to my tent like this. <laughs> and then a friend of mine, Helen, had to drag me to see the Towers of London live the next day. And that helped me feel a lot better, that and paracetamol. Honestly, though, it was horrific. I've never, oh my God, I've never experienced a headache like that in my life. And that was like one pint of hot spicy cider. So if you're watching this, thanks, Helen. She rescued me by taking me to see the Towers of London. Anyway, that's that. So you're kind of getting the, you're kind of getting the, the, the gist of it here that um, my relationship with alcohol, we've, we've never really had a relationship. We've never really got on. But um, what I did notice was at one point, uh, my social circle uh, was a group of people who were in their early 30s and I was at least, I was, I was between eight and 10 years older than them. And they were like, oh, lay your hair down, have a couple of drinks. Why don't you leave the car in town? You know, comments like that. And it, don't feel pressured to drink. I never did. Don't feel pressured to, to, to drink and keep up with your social circle. But what I've noticed now is that my friends who were, you know, there's, you know, eight to 10 years uh, younger than me ish. So I'm 53 now, they're in their early 40s. And now when I see them, they're like, oh no, I'm not drinking. No, no, I can't handle it. You know, so it, it does happen to women. Alcohol can catch up with them. And you know, different things make you happy at different stages of your life. Live music's always going to make me happy. Live music's always going to make my friends happy as well. But it's quite funny how, you know, alcohol's kind of like being subtracted out of their lives so frequently, um, which can only be a good thing, I think. But that's just from my my point of view. So, you know, once upon a time, for example, I used to have a couple of Baileys on ice and it would knock me out and I think I was getting a good night's sleep. But the reality was I was waking up a lot more during the night because it can really, really interrupt your REM. And, you know, if, if, if I had on a Fitbit or something like that and I looked at the track of my sleep, it would be like this. Do you know what I mean? I'd be in and out of sleep. I wouldn't actually be getting good, restful sleep. So... That's just the premise of the video, really. That's today's message, is that your relationship with alcohol will change. Don't feel pressured to drink and keep up with friends. And also notice what you notice with your friends and don't, don't make anybody else feel like they have to keep up with a group of people. Um, I have a very good friend who, it took me pointing out to her that, 
she was getting the booze blues really, really badly and it was getting worse and worse every time she'd been out and had a great Saturday night or a great Friday night. It was taking her longer to recover. So, you know, when you know better, you do better. And as I say, I'm not trying to be the fun police, but just notice what alcohol affects you which way. So, for example, with me, I enjoy maybe a glass or a half a glass you know, or a smidgen of wine with dinner. Nothing much. If I have a gin and tonic now, I'm making it with a thimble full because even after one, I can feel my temperature rising and it brings on a really bad hot flush. So I enjoy the taste, but that's the effect it's having on me. Um, there's other food groups that we can get into as well, but we're going to talk about just the alcoholic element uh, in this video anyway. So that's another thing to watch out for. So with me, it's white wine, Prosecco, Heartbreakingly, a cup of tea as well. Love drinking tea at my mum's house, but I sit and have a cup of tea with her, and whoo, you know, it's ah. Anyway, um, sherry as well to the extent. Do love a sherry, but I mean, like half a glass, and that's enough. Any more than that, and it starts to bring on these menopausal symptoms. You know, um, and along with the fact that, you know, remember I just I mentioned about my good friend having getting the booze blues. Menopause can affect you and your mental health already without adding to it. So just be aware of it. That's all I'm advising. I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do. I'm not making any judgments on anyone. But just be aware of how your body's reacting to different things these days. If you are perimenopausal and you don't know it, or you haven't had a period for a year and you've you're definitely being told you're menopausal. If you've got any questions, please comment below and I will do my very best to answer them. I am a sports massage therapist in Glasgow. I'm getting used to doing these um, like information videos because I do enjoy getting the message out there. Um, but sometimes, uh, you know, because I'm not a professional at this, um, you know, if you can give me any guidance on any questions that you'd like answered, then then please let me know. But just be aware of your relationship with alcohol and don't feel pressured to keep that same relationship if you feel that it's changed. And I think it's really important to discuss it with your friends as well, because at one point when I was uh, like in my 20s, it was almost like a badge of honour who had the worst hangover. And I was like, OK. Anyway, as I say, no judgment here, but just be aware of the effects of different drinks on your body. Uh, like, so for example, if white wine, white Prosecco, etc., or any kind of white spirits are having a negative effect on you, try red. You know, funnily enough, white wine, whoosh. Red wine, no problems at all. But then again, you know, I'm never going to have more than a glass anyway. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. It's a touchy subject, isn't it? And as I say, I'm really trying hard not to sound like the fun police here, uh, but please leave any questions or comments for me. I love hearing back from people that view my videos. It's brilliant. So thank you and enjoy the rest of your day, your evening, your weekend, whenever you're watching this. Bye.